So good afternoon and welcome to our digital learning series. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Alan Whalen. I'm the Executive Director for the Office for Mission and Ministry for the District of Eastern North America. Uh, this is the second of our five webin webinars um, over the next several weeks focused on digital instruction and learning. Uh, today we have Connor Carroll. He's a math and Spanish teacher at Christian Brothers Academy in Syracuse. And he is presenting on the topic of exploring different free online resources. We do request that you mute your sound and use the chat button to ask Connor a question during the presentation. Um, and as time permits, we'll also uh, have time for questions afterwards. And so Connor, it's all yours. All righty, sounds good. So thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I hope that I can help uh, bolster your confidence going into this online learning. I'm just gonna send out a link in the chat uh, to this document that I'm using. Uh, you can click on any of the blue text throughout that document to uh, find these links to online resources that I've built that you are welcome to explore. I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go through the presentation. Uh, like Alan said, feel free to submit any questions through the chat. I'll check it uh, about halfway through, answer five, six questions, and if you guys have them, and if not, then we'll just keep rolling. Uh, but yeah, so thank you all for coming. Uh, here's my title slide. Uh, again, if you're watching a recording of this, you got to type in this entire web address. So thank you for showing up. Uh, that's your prize. You get to use the link in the chat instead. So here's the game plan. Uh, we're going to talk about what you're going to see for these seven technologies. Um, my school, uh, CBA over in Syracuse, did a survey during our online teaching, just like a lot of schools. And I'm going to share what the students most desired uh, from their online experience, what those results were from our school, and then start going through some of the technologies. I'm gonna talk about the first three as home base. You're gonna hear me say a lot, types of technologies and websites that you can use, and then we'll take a little stretch break, question break, and then we'll explore the last four, and then we'll take care of any last questions that you guys have. So what you can expect from this little chat that we're having, I'm going to first introduce you to a new technology. I'm going to tell you what it can be used for in an educational setting. I've made public examples of all seven of these technologies. So you guys will have the opportunity to look at them, try them out, see what your students would see, because you would be registering essentially as a student. And then uh, what are some pros and cons? Because that's a big thing with all of these technologies. There's upsides and downsides to every single program that you use. So how do we work towards uh, emphasizing the pros and mitigating the cons? Uh, what students want. So the big things that students at CBA Syracuse really wanted were a central location. They wanted that home base where they could just find all of their resources, find their lesson plans, find their homework. If it was all online, this is where they were going in to check in for your class. They also wanted a direct line of communication. So having office, virtual office hours where you're sitting by your email ready to respond and give feedback and or help. Consistency and routine, not changing uh, your plan all that much. Once you find something that works for you and for your students, sticking with it is always going to help. And then also as LaSallians, we want to maintain those relationships. We all became teachers in the first place simply because we wanted, we had a teacher that we had a really special connection and relationship with. So finding ways to make sure that those are still there is going to be essential. 
first technology though is Google Classroom. What is it? It's a virtual classroom uh, with access to Google Meets. So while we're in Zoom, Google has their own platform in Google Meets. Uh, one quick thing that I want to mention that's really cool about Google Meets is there's a closed captioning button and that will translate all of the speech uh, into text in the actual call live. So I actually am a huge fan of Google Meets. It's really, really great for students that might have some hearing impairments that you want to respect and honor. Uh, in Google Classroom, you can post your assignments and rubrics. It does have an originality report tool that lets you check for copying through all of your assignments. So making sure that our students are submitting their own work. You can create quizzes and other assessments through Google Forms and assign them as an assignment. And then you also have a questions tool in your assignments that's similar to making a discussion or, or forum post on other platforms. So if you're using some sort of Blackboard technology, uh, discussion posts and questions is a great way to encourage dialogue between your students. Some ways that you can use it, this can be your home base. You can post notes, assignments, announcements, lesson plans. If you're out sick for the day or you have to cancel your office hours, there's a news feed that works just like any Facebook page. Uh, and you can post your lesson plan so they can follow instructions. You can give your assessments, which can even be homework assignments. Uh, you can host discussions through the questions tool or live classes through Google Meets. And there's also a gradebook function. So if you want your students to make sure that they're staying on top of their work, keeping that gradebook up to date as much as possible will ensure that they know where they are at pacing wise in your classroom. Where can you find an example? If you found this document on Google Drive, you can click on this blue text for Google Classroom and it will take you to the Google Classroom website. I'll just give you guys, an, oh, if I click on it, it's gonna take me away from the document, but this is the trial there's a DINA sample classroom that you can join. Uh, let me get back to where I was. So you can enter the code BKPJAJ6, and that will take you into the sample classroom. I made a couple of announcements on the newsfeed. I made a couple of assignments so that are all live. Uh, and I will be going back through the next couple of weeks and making sure that you guys can access and get feedback. I'll probably come up with some. This is what feedback would look like on this assignment uh, type of response. And I'll be going through it. So if you register for the class and you want to complete an assignment, feel free uh, if you want to see what feedback looks like as well on this any of these platforms. Um, Pros and cons. Uh, it has all of the tools that you, that us teachers need. Uh, it has an assignments page, a gradebook page, announcement section. It's great. It covers all of the bases. And it's really, really easy to incorporate all of the Google tools like Google Docs and Google Slides. In my personal opinion, uh, it's missing a lot of personality. Once you look at our next technology in Padlet, you're going to see that this white background uh, is not all that inviting on the Google Classroom page. If you guys know how to change the background and make it a little bit more vibrant and exciting, please let me know because I would love everything else about Google Classroom. I love, but it is missing that personality. Uh, as you guys have all probably seen in the news, TikTok is really big with our young folks right now. Uh, which are 15 second videos. So if you're not grabbing your students attention, they're not going to want to stay on your page for all that long. So they're going to get their work done and then leave. Meanwhile, if you make something really inviting and exciting and vibrant, you might be able to get them to stay on and be thinking about your class for a little bit longer. Uh, it is also a possible option for managing clubs. Uh, like I said, Google Tools is really easy to incorporate into Google Classroom, which includes Google Calendar. So 
if you want to like schedule practices or virtual meetings, you can make a calendar and set all of that up through Google Classroom for your clubs as well. If you're trying to get your students involved with school outside of the academic day. Uh, next technology, Padlet. Uh, it's a virtual bulletin board. So you get to pretty much set up a screen full of any information that you want uh, and make little sticky notes that you can post either scattered uh, throughout the board or uh, in a streamlined manner. Uh, you can also host discussions on Padlet. So if you want a discussion between all of your students, you can all have, have each of them contribute to your bulletin board. Uh, you can post your lesson plans, links to lesson plans, uh, announcements, instructions for work. And also, this is one of those technologies that my mom personally used. Uh, she teaches elementary phys ed. And so she worked with her other special area teachers and they made a Padlet for all of their elementary students uh, as a central location. They all had one shared Padlet. They would edit it and update it with new announcements of activities that all of their students could do in the free time to supplement their academic day. So it really is a nice place as a home base. Uh, if you are looking to check out the sample Padlet, here's the link. I'll leave it up for a couple of seconds uh, if you're just typing away. But again, any of the blue text in this document, you can just click on it and it'll pop up in your browser and feel free to visit there. I believe I have the responses set up. If not, uh, feel free to email me, let me know, or send, send me a message in chat if you're already there. Uh, but I believe I have the responses set up. If not, I will fix that. Pros and cons. Communication. This is such an easy and inviting platform that you could send this to your students and your parents of your students. Uh, and that way you're all on the same page. No lesson plans will be missed. Students have no reason to not get their work done. Um, if you put two hours into this, you'll learn how to use the program pretty quickly. You'll be able to make something really beautiful and students won't want to necessarily, they might not be excited about coming to school online, but they won't leave your page right away. Uh, it does lack the assignment and gradebook tools that Google Classroom has to offer. So you would need to supplement this with a Google Classroom type platform, or if your school, ha as many schools do, have electronic gradebooks through um, PowerSchool or Blackboard, you have a gradebook tool that is already available. So if you can partner Padlet with something like that or Google Classroom, it will work really well together. The last website that I would like to draw your attention to is Khan Academy. Uh, it's a website with ready-to-use resources, videos and worksheets tailored to Common Core and AP curricula. Uh, it's, at least from the math teacher's perspective, uh, I haven't found a Khan Academy video that I didn't like. I love every single one of their math videos. Uh, they're absolutely wonderful. Uh, you get to pretty much pick from a library of pre-made videos and worksheets and readings to make your assignments for your students. Uh, there is a gradebook function. So if students don't watch a whole video or don't finish a worksheet, it, it will say so in the gradebook that they can check and you can also check. Uh, and also it gives you an item analysis of what questions students missed and got right from the worksheets that you assign. So kind of helpful information. Uh, here's the uh, sample classroom that I have set up. It is a geometry class, but I promise there is no reason to be anxious. There is no actual math involved. Uh, these are mostly videos about Euclid, the father of geometry. 
Uh, so if you want to check it out, try out a few assignments, see what it looks like, feel free. Uh, there is no reason to be scared of having to do any algebra, geometry, math, really things, except watching some historical videos. Pros and cons. This has excellent videos and resources. Again, I can't speak for some of the history or science videos, uh, but the math videos really, really are excellent. So I have very little reason to doubt the science and history videos that are available on their site. It's a great place if you're stuck making a worksheet. You can go pull up their worksheets and make some question or borrow some questions for your worksheets and your tests if you're struggling. Uh, while the plus sides are really, really great, the downsides are also really, really poor. It lacks any personal connection to your students because your students aren't even watching videos of you. They're not seeing your face. They're not seeing any face in most of these videos. Uh, it's just a narration with a whiteboard in front of them. Uh, there's also no place for students to ask questions. So if they are struggling with a topic, the video just did not help them whatsoever, uh, and they didn't get anything from that video, they have no place to ask their questions. So it comes down to them having to email you or find a different place to ask, participate in a discussion post. So really good things, really bad things with this one. Um, the last one was just a little bit of a nuance that I didn't really appreciate. Uh, you're not able to schedule future assignments. So uh, if you wanted, if you didn't want to bombard your students with all of their work for the week, uh, you had to get up before them in the morning and schedule it that day. Uh, I had some students when we were fully online that were getting up at getting up and emailing me at 6:30 in the morning. Uh, with and I was not quite awake by 6.30 in the morning to schedule some of the assignments. So by the end of my use of Khan Academy, uh, I did start getting up at 5.30, just like uh, we would have when we were in school. So you, you got to make sure that you're staying on top of your students because some of them are still just as motivated as ever to make sure their work is getting done. Now, I've thrown a whole bunch of information at you guys. Uh, I'm going to say it's a stretch break. I'm going to take a peek at the chat. Uh, there is a whopping no questions. So if you've got questions, I'll briefly pause. If you need to stand up, stretch your legs, feel free. Um, if you... I have a couple of ideas. You can take a break, walk around the room a couple times. Uh, originality report in Google. How does the original report in Google Classroom work? I am not entirely sure. Uh, again, that's the math teacher part of me. I haven't quite used the originality report because I'm not having a lot of students submit papers or anything. Uh, what the, what I do want to emphasize, uh, so thank you for the question, even though I don't have a great, the greatest answer. Uh, what I do want to highlight is that all of these technologies, since they're online, there's a plethora of really, really good and helpful resources. If you ever just search uh, your question in Google, either a YouTube video will come up or some sort of Q&A with Google itself for Google Classroom uh, will come up and be able to really answer your questions. Uh, in fact, let me just do that quickly. So how does originality report work? I'm just typing the exact question into Google and Google support has an entire article dedicated to having that question answered. I'm on a Mac and not a Windows, so 
So that would be a good link. Oh, hi, Lindsay. I'm going to be talking about you in just a few moments and your phenomenal presentation yesterday. Uh, I have not heard of OG Google Jamboards. Um, sounds very interesting. Uh, I am definitely going to have to look that up. Google Jamboard. This looks a lot more interesting than your Google Classrooms do. Uh, so if you're looking for a way to uh, make your Google Classroom more inviting, that definitely would do it. Uh, the struggle I've had with Khan Academy in the past is that it only gives students like five question, practice questions per lesson. Did I have the same experience? Yes, I did. Um, and also the other issue, especially with the math questions, is that you can't control exactly which questions were picked. Uh, to try and uh, limit student collaboration or cheating, uh, I always clicked the random question button on Khan Academy, which I realized actually made it worse uh, for my students because then they were all getting different questions and I had to answer single questions instead of blanket uh, on question number four uh, it really did not there was no question number four for all of the students so uh, the solution that I had was I printed out all of the questions that were on a Khan Academy worksheet or assignment and I would do all of them and then scan my answers up onto Google Docs for my students to take a look at um, so Google Classroom does not have access permissions and that is why I have my second laptop pulled up so I can start working on some Google Classroom joining conundrums uh, so I will continue to take a look at that Um, so, Seth, I'm seeing that they're a whiteboard by using Zoom, uh, so I'm guessing that's the Google Jamboards, and I definitely will be, if we go on to full online, my school's doing hybrid to start off, uh, I am definitely going to be looking into Google Jamboards, because they look really fun. That's always the fun thing, is exploring new stuff for me. Uh, so, Sophia, I'm reading your note. Service Industries in Rhode Island. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that it's starting to, starting to help. Um, it sounds like really great work that you're doing. Um, and I think I'm caught up. On questions last chance before we we pick up the course and start running with this cart I think I got the analogy right going once going twice all right so Ed puzzle this was by far the greatest find uh, one of our biology teachers, Kathy Mulholland, she found this and it revolutionized how I was giving all of my review for the end of the year. I absolutely have fallen in love with Edpuzzle. It is a video editing tool that lets you insert questions into your videos. So you say a minute into your video, you're like, I want to make sure that my students are one, making are watching the video and two paying attention and three actually understanding what's happening so you can insert three types of questions uh, a multiple choice question that they have to answer an open response question or if you just want to interject and 
throw your two cents into the video, you can also write a note that the students just have to read. They can't skip forward in the video until they click continue on each of these questions. Uh, how can you use it? You can add questions to videos that you personally have made or videos that you would like to use. Uh, Edpuzzle has partnered with a bunch of different websites like YouTube, like Khan Academy, and you can edit those videos and add your own questions in however you would like. There is also a classroom function. So if you want to set up an entire classroom and assign certain videos, you are welcome to do that. It has a gradebook function, and so you can check how much of the videos your students have watched and how many of the questions that they are getting right. Uh, this was my biggest homework check that I used throughout online learning. Uh, it was really, really great because I grade homework for completion because that's the way that I believe homework does. You're welcome to have your own opinions. Uh, but I grade homework for completion. So all I had to do was make sure that they watched the entire video. Um, and then if they had questions afterward, I'd have a separate discussion post that they would fill out. Where can you find some examples? Uh, this time you're going to need the actual this actual document. So once again, I'm going to run page 26. I'm going to, just in case anybody uh, has joined in late, I am going to paste this link in one more time. Uh, Mary, I completely agree. They are so perfect for online learning that I, I couldn't have made it through online learning without them. Uh, so I have two examples. Uh, it's on slide 26 if you're clicking in the document. Um, one is of a video from Maestro Kaplan. Uh, if you haven't seen his videos, they're really, really great. I love them. Uh, so I made a head puzzle through a pre-made YouTube video uh, sourced from somebody else. Uh, just make sure you watch those videos all the way through because you might not actually like it or they might say something in, inappropriate that you don't want your students to hear because that's YouTube for you. So just make sure that you're doing your due diligence and watching your video pre-made videos all the way through. Um, or you can make videos yourself and upload them into Edpuzzle. So my eighth graders, they were getting really, really bored and sick of online learning. Uh, they were just done with worksheets, so I tried to give them a fun day. I was watching a taco documentary on Netflix, and I said, I'm going to make this a Ed puzzle. Uh, so we did a 15-minute taco day. Uh, if you want to point and laugh at me, that is the video to watch. It was very enjoyable, and I got a lot of thank yous. So making sure you take a little bit of a break every now and then, just like we would in the classroom, to make sure that you remember our students are still kids and still like to have fun. So while there's this whole stressful world going on, make sure you're celebrating the little things too. That's, that's my two cents. Uh, pros and cons, I have very little cons about Edpuzzle. Um, pros, student engagement, they're watching the videos, you're making sure they're engaged. Uh, it provides an item analysis by saying, here's the questions that they're getting wrong. The only con that I can really think of is that it's adding an extra step to the videos that you're making. Um, so sometimes you're spending two hours making a presentation and then it takes you a couple takes to record the presentation because your dog's in the background barking. You didn't like how you explained something. So you do five or six takes on your videos. Uh, so that takes you another hour. This could take another hour, half hour to an hour to add the questions into your videos. Um, so it is adding an extra step, but in my personal opinion, it is 100% worth that extra little step. So 
I highly, highly, highly recommend Edpuzzle if you are looking for an extra way to making sure your students are learning. But wait, Connor, I, I would love to do videos, but I don't have a way of recording them. Well, I'm glad you're here because Loom is the exact thing that you could use. Uh, it is a screen recording software um, with three different recording modes. Uh, you can record either just your computer screen, just through your webcam. So that little picture of my face that you're seeing, you could just use your webcam. Or what I believe you guys are seeing is a combination of my computer screen and my faces in the corner. Uh, it is available in two ways, either as a Chrome extension. So if you go to the top corner of your Google Chrome, you can have a little button for Loom, or you can download it as a separate program uh, to use outside of your browser. Um, if you're looking for a really direct way to translate lectures into an online format, this is probably the way to go. Um, one of my high school teachers, uh, he was a Harvard grad and he believed 100% in Harvard lecture styles. I am 99% certain this is the type of thing that he used as he just spoke over a presentation and taught that way um, because that's what worked great for him. Uh, my two on the AP US history exam probably disappointed him and probably broke his five streak. Uh, but that that worked for him, so I'm sure that this is what he's doing now. Uh, it also, if you're looking to just use the webcam, you can give instructions verbally for students that might struggle to sit down and read each step. Maybe they prefer hearing it and seeing your face a little bit more. Um, also, if you just want to use a screen, uh, I believe tomorrow's presentation is about Google Drawing. So in, when I was first learning Photoshop, I know that the magic wand tool was really confusing for me. Uh, so if Google Draw has the magic wand tool, learning how to use that through a screen demonstration might be really helpful. Uh, I'm going to show you where to find the example in a couple more slides uh, when I get to Flipgrid. Uh, but you will have an example for Loom. Uh, it's really, really easy to use. I have very little complaints about it. Uh, it really was click a button, click record, or click, did you want your webcam and the screen, or just one or the other, uh, and then click record, and that was pretty much all it was. You got to download the video after. Um, you can get access to more tools, like pointer tools, pen tools, and all that stuff for a membership subscription. I don't believe it's too costly. Um, I would have may substituted Loom for Screencastify because it essentially does the same exact um, tools and everything. Uh, and Lindsay started talking about Screencastify yesterday. Uh, and I honestly just thought that there was a subscription for Screencastify, but I'm learning differently now. Uh, but Loom is pretty great. Uh, the only difference between Loom and Screencastify is that Loom has a circle as the webcam when you're doing the combo, and Screencastify has a box. Uh, the geometry teacher in me simply prefers Loom because I like circles. Uh, so if you have a preference either way, uh, that's how you're going to want to decide between Loom and Screencastify. Now you've got a video. What can you do with a video? Well, you can upload it to Flipgrid. Um, you can make and post assignments. They're known as topics. And instead of getting a written response, Flipgrid allows students to post video responses. Uh, how you might want to, why you might want video responses is maybe you're pre doing presentations on sensitive material. Um, so I had, in Spanish last year, I had students present their family and some of them had unique family structures that they didn't feel comfortable sharing with the class. So we did one-on-one -on -one presentations instead of in-class presentations. Um, music lessons, I know this online learning platform definitely must have been a struggle for our music educators. I remember in high school band though, 
I would have to do uh, sectionals and playing tests on our band music. So our band teacher would say, all right, play from measure 12 to measure 81 and show me what you got. Well, Flipgrid says you have a minute 30. So if you're trying to make sure they're following the right tempo, if you know the cut of music and how long it's supposed to take, you can check your tempo by saying you got to be done by then. Hopefully not getting shifted tempos, but also if you're running a Shakespeare or acting theater type class, uh, monologues, you can essentially have those submitted through Flipgrid as well. So back to that Loom recording that I have made for you guys. Uh, if you click on this blue text, uh, it'll take you to the sample topic or assignment that I have made up explaining what a loom is as well as what Flipgrid can do for your classroom online. So feel free to click on that link if you would like. Uh, pros and cons. This is exactly what you want to use when written responses are not enough. It can also Oh, you can also, again, with Lindsay's presentation yesterday, I learned that I was just making topics and like having a single topic, but I found out from Lindsay's presentation, you can also make a class to keep all of your topics in one place so your students can revisit old topics that they've submitted. Um, the only downside is that students must have a recording device, which if they're participating in the online learning, they're pretty much all going to have. Uh, the only issue that I could foresee happening is there some sort of water damage, they got the microphone in their phone wet so they can only text, uh, or their laptop fell and the microphone broke or something. So that's one of those things that us as teachers need to differentiate on a one-to-one -one basis, uh, but overall there shouldn't be many issues with recording devices in, in this whole teaching format. The last uh, application that I have to share with you guys, you might have heard before, and I'm just going to ask that you hear me out with this one. Uh, it is not the most uh, high school oriented type of program, but I absolutely love it. I will probably never go any time in my teaching career without it. I am a huge advocate for it, um, and I'll explain why in just a few moments. Uh, Class Dojo is a classroom management website and app. You can run the app on your phone and use it as a remote control for your computer screen. Uh, it's got a bunch of different tools like a timer, random name picker, group maker, noise meter, music, like background music, and think pair share tools all for you to use. Um, how you can use it. Uh, it's a lot harder to see who's on a Zoom call than in a classroom. So if you want to use a random name picker to call on names instead of the traditional raise your hand if you have an answer or a question, uh, that's, that's one way you could use it. Uh, also, when you're not in front of your students teaching in the classroom, sometimes time management is a little bit more challenging. So using the timer, just having your phone propped up in front of the speaker, could be a little helpful. Um, think pair share is not your traditional educational think pair share uh, types of questions. These are personal questions. Uh, if you think back to the college days, uh, these are your icebreaker questions, um, but they're more as warm up activities. Um, the reason for this is because this is primary. This website and app, Class Dojo, is actually primarily made for uh, elementary and preschool. Uh, applications, but uh, I'll get to it in just a second. Um, this is also the time that I want to just give a little PSA. Um, Class Dojo has a little announcement before it, um, before you invite students to join, that a lot of our students require parental consent if they're under the age of 18 to use a lot of these, to join a lot of these technologies. Um, Honestly, as long as you're communicating with your parents and saying this is for classroom use, they're not going to have a problem with it. A lot of our home districts are saying these are the technologies that we will be using for the online platform. 
so the expectation is there that they're going that their students and children will have to be joining these online platforms uh, but I think everybody here is above the age of 18 so you don't need parental consent uh, you can either open the class dojo app or go to the website dojo.me and then our classroom code is GLDKHL and feel free to join. Uh, what you're going to see is you get a little alien figure uh, that can earn positivity points for good behavior. Um, you can also invite parents in for communication uh, and just hear me out. While it is designed for elementary students, uh, I have pulled it out uh, and posted the goofy aliens up on my whiteboard when I'm teaching my first period 10th graders who most of the time are pretty apathetic that early in the morning. Uh, it, it creates a little bit of levity. Uh, if your humor is part of your classroom environment, which I try to be a little bit on the goofy side when I'm presenting uh, and teaching to my students. Uh, it's a great way to just get students to smile. Uh, and they're like, what, do, what does my monster look like, Mr. Carroll? Uh, so I, and I say, you got to wait for your name to get called. Uh, so it's, it's a great way to just give students that breath of fresh air, uh, separate from the material, just who I'm here, I'm in school, I'm paying attention because I want to see what my monster looks like. So with that, uh, it, yes, it's goofy, but that's the last present that last technology, excuse me, uh, that I have for you guys. So uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I'm going to hop back on over to the chat and see if there's any more uh, questions or announcements in the chat. Um, I heard, so Mary, I heard, oh, Diane, I love, I get love. Uh, so Diana has some feedback that video shouldn't be too long on Ed Puzzles because questions are inserted along the way, it will take students longer to complete and they'll get frustrated, 100%. So if you have a five minute video, uh, expect it to take seven to 10 minutes because they are answering questions. They're doing a worksheet essentially alongside a video. Um, and then Mary, I heard some math teachers were having students explaining how to work out a problem in Flipgrid for an alternative assessment. That is a great idea that I'm probably going to steal. I like it. And that's exactly what us teachers have to do in this whole online thing. Sharing ideas. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you have cool ideas, you got my email. Please send them my way because I like hearing those ideas. Um, any other questions that you've you guys have. Sorry if I talked very fast. I'm not used to presenting for long periods of time. We haven't had to do it since April, I think. Any other questions for Connor? Anytime. Good very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys, I'm, I hope I helped in some way. Uh, again, feel free to email me if you've got questions, ideas, uh, happy to work through anything because I love, I love these types of problems to solve. So feel free to send questions my way. If I can't yeah. help, I will. So thanks again, Connor. Uh, just a reminder that uh, tomorrow we'll have another webinar. It starts at three o'clock again. Also, these are being recorded so that uh, they'll be put up eventually on the DINA website and you can play back some of this information as you see fit. Um, we, again, best wishes to each of you as you go through this process as schools start to open up again and 
whether it's all completely online or hybrid or even in person, I think these these tools give you an option uh, to really um, approach your, your instructional efforts from different perspectives and to be a more effective teacher. So thanks to all of you for joining and hopefully you can join tomorrow. Uh, also, we have two scheduled next week on Tuesday and Wednesday. And Connor, the uh, Google drawings, is that what it is, the drawings? I, that's next week. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday next week, but it's not tomorrow. Got it. All right. Bye, Matt. All right. Thank you all very much.